WWE's Bad Blood finally returns for its fourth installment in its history of phenomenal feud ending rivalry pay-per-views. Yes, that is a very strange way to describe it, but we've had some incredible Bad Bloods in the past. We have Bad Blood in your house. October 5th, 1997, that Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker in Hell in a Cell. We had Bad Blood 2003, Triple H versus Kevin Nash. Hell in a Cell with Mick Foley as the special guest referee. And we had Bad Blood 2004, Triple H versus Shawn Michaels in Hell in a Cell. What a way to bring it back in 2024, nearly 20 years after one of the last events. And we have another phenomenal Hell in a Cell match to end the feud between Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. But before we get into that, let's get into the rest of the card. Liv Morgan with Dirty Dominic Mysterio versus Rhea Ripley for the Women's World Heavyweight Championship. And Dirty Dominic Mysterio is going to be right where he belongs, locked up in a cage, swinging and dangling from the rafters. Yes, Dirty Dominic Mysterio is going to be in a shark cage. I'm looking forward to the end of this feud because I believe Liv and Rhea have done enough to make this one of the best female feuds and one of the real only female feuds in 2024 and to blow it off at Bad Blood for the Women's World Championship, I think is a great way to go about it. My biggest gripe with this is I still don't see Rhea Ripley coming out on top. As much as we love that Mommy is always on top, I don't think it happens this time. I believe that there's going to be way too much involvement from the Judgment Day, even though Dom's going to be hanging from a cage. I Probably Dom's going to drop something out of his pocket down to Liv Morgan, have that that type of uh, swerve happen. JD's going to get involved, Carlito, Finn Balor, everyone, I believe, might get involved. Even though Finn Balor and Priest are in their own match tonight, there's going to be too much involvement. So my predictions for this match, Liv Morgan and still women's world champion guys if you agree with me in the comments on that one where does Rhea Ripley go after this if she does not come out on top as the women's world heavyweight champion following this match at bad blood Moving on to Damian Priest and Finn Balor in a straight up singles match. I love that these two are finally getting to this point in their feud. I don't think this is going to be the blow off match. I think there's more to this feud, maybe going into Survivor Series. But Finn Balor and Damian Priest have been doing some great work telling this story ever since SummerSlam. It's one of the stories that I really love paying attention to because Priest has developed so much over the last 18 months and Finn Balor is Finn Balor he deserves to be in the spotlight as a main event guy I have said this for many 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 years and I think honestly Finn is world heavyweight champion uh, material and I want to see him back in that title race but right now with this Damian Priest feud I think there's so much more to be told considering the longevity of of the Judgment Day with that entire group and how Damian Priest, um, Finn Balor, Rhea Ripley, Dominic Mysterio rode the roads for almost two years together. There's so much to be told in this match. I think this is going to be brutal. I think this is going to be a typical bad blood match, which we deserve um, with this feud. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. But again, I feel the Judgment Day is going to get involved and Rhea Ripley's not going to be able to help Damian Priest. And I see, you know, Finn Balor potentially going over in this. But... I am going to pick Damian Priest. So Damian Priest to go over on Finn Balor. Nia Jax versus Bayley in a women's match for the WWE Women's Championship. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I am really starting to enjoy the work Nia Jax is doing. I have always been on the anti-Nia Jax train, but honestly, ever since her return, Nia has been doing amazing work yes clip it quote it post it i don't care but i said what i said nia Jax has been doing a great job uh this feud with bailey uh and naomi being involved uh 
Bailey hit that Uno reverse on Naomi on SmackDown to get this opportunity. But I really think the story here is what's going on with Tiffany Stratton and Nia Jax. Tiffany Stratton still holding that Women's Money in the Bank champion uh, contract. And I think this might be the opportunity. I think Nia is pushing Tiffany Stratton to that edge where you know what this could be the opportunity where Tiffany Stratton just says I've had enough I'm coming for that women's championship I want that women's championship I deserve that women's championship and I don't care what you say so with that being said I think Nia Jax does go over on Bailey in this match but I do not see Nia Jax walking out of Atlanta with the women's championship I have Tiffany Stratton cashing in I don't think it's gonna be the standard Austin Theory run-in for the all six months of holding the money in the bank contract I think it is a true cash-in in Atlanta and Tiffany Stratton walks out and new WWE women's champion and I cannot wait to hear the pop for when that happens Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk in Hell in a Cell. It wouldn't be bad blood without Hell in a Cell. This is going to be a brutal match. And I've said again, you how many times and how many videos have you guys watched of mine where I have said Drew McIntyre is going to be the best heel of 2024 and he has stood by it. And I don't mean go away heat like Dominic Mysterio has where nobody wants to listen to Dom talk. They just want to boo him off the mic. Drew McIntyre, you want to boo him, but you also want to listen to him. That is the definition of a fantastic heel because Drew McIntyre is Thanos. How many people agreed with what Thanos was selling in the Avengers movies? Drew McIntyre is the bad guy that some people love. Drew, Drew McIntyre is the dro Joker to Batman. And right now, I'm loving everything that Drew McIntyre is doing. CM Punk is being the best version of a nasty good guy that he can be. CM Punk is doing so much good when it comes to being back in wwe and this feud honestly is the catalyst to what they both can produce as top guys not in the title picture so right now i'm just going to sit back and happily enjoy this match it is going to be brutal it is going to be violent there is going to be color which i think wwe has strayed away from over the past decade with vicious amounts of blood i personally believe both of these men are going to be crimson by the end of the match personally i don't care who wins because this feud everyone that is a fan of professional wrestling good storytelling and sports entertainment we have all won as fans watching this feud seen a lot of people say oh i'm kind of bored of it no you can't be bored of it because it's been one of the best stories of 2024 let it end let it come to its final resting place with one of these guys on top but both of these guys winning in a in our hearts i don't know who to pick but if I'm going to pick someone, I'm going with my boy Drew McIntyre. CM Punk is CM Punk. He can lose 100 feuds in a row, but still never need to be out of the spotlight to be CM Punk. CM Punk losing is still CM Punk winning. Drew McIntyre losing, I don't think is valuable to the stock that Drew has built as a heel over the last year. I think Drew McIntyre needs to lay CM Punk out and prove that he doesn't need CM Punk to be in a top guy feud. So with that being said, Drew McIntyre is your winner of the Hell in a Cell match. But at the end of the day, as fans, we all win.
we all win because this feud has been fantastic. But guys, in the comments, where does CM Punk go after this? Where does Drew McIntyre go after this? These boys have carried an amazing feud, but what is next for both of these men when it comes to their run on Monday Night Raw? And will things change for them going into 2025 and the, Sma and the Netflix deal? The Bloodlines, Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu versus Cody Rhodes and the real tribal chief, Roman Reigns. In a tag match, this is a very interesting match to say the least. We have a lot of dynamics, a lot of catalysts that could be brought into the picture. We can't forget about the Tongans, Tongaloa and Tamatonga, the the goat, the goat, Tongaloa and Tamatonga. And we can also not forget about Randy Orton and Kevin Owens being on the side of technically Cody Rhodes right now. I love what they're doing with Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. It's making us want that third match for the undisputed WWE Championship. I love that Solo and Jacob are getting their face time with Roman Reigns and Roman's kind of telling two different stories going into this match. My biggest concern is with this match is who wins and who takes the pin. You're not going to let Cody take the pin from Solo or Jacob. Roman isn't getting pinned by Solo or Jacob. Solo is if he gets pinned, him being the new tribal chief really breaks down to, is he a tribal chief if he can't actually get a W? And we go back to 2023, early 2024 solo who couldn't get a win after losing to John, after beating John Cena. Yeah, what I said. And then at the final one, Jacob Fatu's not taking the pin. They are protecting Jacob Fatu as this insanely powerful force over on SmackDown. So... What happens? Are we going to get a 25 minute banger between all four of these competitors and then have the Tongans rush in and we get a DQ and this ends in a no contest? Or does it come down to the Tongans getting involved, Randy and KO running in, an accidental bump by KO or Randy on Cody, and then this builds all the way into Survivor Series where War Games is the new bloodline versus a mixture of the top guys on SmackDown in Cody, Roman, Randy, and KO. And that's where we finally get either KO and Randy, uh, KO or Randy turn and them walking out of Survivor Series. Like, this is a very hard match to predict. This is a very difficult match to book. I personally don't even know where to go with this. Um, I think if Jacob takes the pin, there's a whole massive hit to his stock as this wild enforcer and the Samoan werewolf. I think Jacob comes in and dog walks on Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. In real life, I will dog walk your ass. But if Solo takes the pin, where's the credibility in Solo Sakoa in being the new tribal chief? I, the only person I can see that can take the pin in this match is Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is the only one and that, and he's the champion. So what do we do? What do we do in this match? Guys, I don't have a prediction for this match. I think it's too confusing. I think maybe, am I looking too much into this? Is it Solo gets pinned by Cody? which separates Roman and Jacob. I'm personally going to go with my prediction being this is a disqualification or a no contest with both these teams being laid out or having to be separated because the referee loses control considering the Tongans are going to be in the corner. Guys, let me know in the comments. Book it yourselves. And don't forget, I'm going to be live on twitch.tv slash Mr. Teshk one hour before Bad Blood, which is an early 6 Eastern start time. Guys, don't forget to give me a follow, like, subscribe, and put the bell on for all notifications that are the Mr. Teshk Wrestling Channel. And like always, be good people. I will see you at Bad Blood.